Good day, my dear students. Welcome to our class. Every owner or manager of a food establishment bears the responsibility of protecting the health of his patrons and employees against infectious diseases that may be caused by lack of adequate sanitation in the kitchen where the food is prepared. Sanitation rules and regulations must be strictly enforced and every kitchen manager must implement and observe the high standard of cleanliness and sanitation of the kitchen premises, the kitchen tools, utensils, and equipment, the kitchen employees, and the fresh quality of ingredients as well as the handling of these ingredients. So today, I will introduce to you the different tools, equipment, and premises that we usually use in preparing or handling different types of food. Okay, so before that, let's be familiar with different cooking materials. When we say cooking materials, those are the types of materials used in tools, equipments, and utensils. First, Okay, first we have aluminum. When we say aluminum, it is mostly used in the kitchen and most popular because it is lightweight, attractive, and less expensive. It requires care to keep it shiny and clean. So it also gives even heat distribution no matter what heat temperature you have. So, always remember, remember class, aluminum turns dark when used with alkalis such as potatoes, beets, carrots, and other vegetables, while acid vegetables like tomatoes will brighten it. Again, when we say aluminum, it is mostly used in the kitchen and most popular because it is lightweight, attractive, and less expensive. Another cooking, another cooking materials is stainless steel. It is the most popular material used for tools and equipment. But it is more expensive. It is easier to clean and shine and will not wear out easily because of its good quality. So again, we have stainless steel. It is the most popular material used for tools and equipment. But it is more expensive and is easier to clean and shine, and will not wear out easily. Okay, next. Okay, next we have glass. So usually glass, glass is used for salad making and dessert, but not practical for top or surface cooking. So since glass is brittle or fragile, it can easily, be, it can easily break. So great care is needed to ensure for long shelf life. Okay, next we have cast iron. Cast iron glass, it is durable but must be kept oiled to avoid rusting. Salad oil with no salt or shortening can be rubbed inside and out and dry. So always wash with soap but not detergent before using. So again, cast iron, it is durable but must be kept oiled to avoid rusting. So, as you can see, this is the old type of cooking materials that our parents might use during their times. Okay, next we have Teflon. It is a special coating applied inside aluminum or steel pots and pans. It prevents food from sticking to the pan. So it is also called as non-stick pan, if you're familiar with that class. So it is easier to wash and clean, but take care not to scratch the teflon coating with sharp instrument such as knife or fork. So it will ruin the quality of the teflon. Use wooden or plastic spatula to torn or mix food inside. So, the advisable tools that uh, to be used is wooden or plastic spatula or the teflon that is appropriate to the, that kind of pan. Okay, 
Okay, so we're done with different cooking materials. Now, I will introduce to you the different kitchen tools and equipment. Okay, so now I will introduce to you the primary cooking equipment. So when we say primary cooking equipment, it is generally used in heating for a partially finished cooked food and defrosting frozen food. So let us define equipment. So when we say equipment class, it may refer to a small electrical appliance such as mixer, or a large expensive power operated appliance such as range or refrigerator so when we hear the word equipment the next word that connects with it is it is a power operated appliance okay so one of the most necessary equipment that we should have inside the kitchen is refrigerator so refrigerator class it is an insulated box equipped with refrigeration unit and a control to maintain the proper inside temperature for food storage so it is the place where we store our food for a long shelf life so okay another equipment is oven oven class it is a chamber or compartment used for baking cooking heating or drying so again oven that is, uh, that is a chamber or compartment used for cooking baking heating or next we also have microwave oven so when we say microwave oven it is used for cooking or heating food okay next we have blender it is used to chop to blend to mix to whip to puree to grate and liquefy all kinds of food so a blender class it is a very useful appliance they vary in the amount of power like voltage or wattage so as of now we have different types of blenders so we have handy blender like the small one and we have the conventional blender or the old type okay next we have range so we have range or the kitchen stove so kitchen stove it is of often called simply as a stove or a cooker it is a kitchen appliance designed for the purpose of cooking food kitchen stoves rely on the application of direct heat for the cooking process and may also contain an oven used for baking so usually when we say range that is two in one so we have stove on top and then at the bottom part is the oven next we have griddle so when we say griddle that is a cooking device consisting of a broad flat surface heated by gas electricity wood or coal with both residential and commercial applications next we have steamer so a steamer or food steamer or steam cooker that is a small kitchen appliance used to cook or prepare various foods with steam heat by means of holding the food in a closed vessel reducing steam scape so this manner of cooking is called of course steaming next we have fryer or deep fryer so a deep fryer is a kitchen appliance used for deep frying so deep uh, frying class it is a method of cooking by submerging food into oil at high heat so typically between temperatures of 350 degree fahrenheit and 375 degree fahrenheit okay so we're done with primary cooking equipment now let's talk about the auxiliary cooking equipment so what is the difference between the two so when we say auxiliary cooking equipment those which provide help or support principal equipment 
Okay, so first we have handheld mixers. It is less expensive than a stand mixer. So as you can see class, we have different types of mixer. So first we have the stand mixer. Then the second one is we have handheld mixers. So a handheld mixer, it is just the thing for a quick task like whipping cream or egg whites as well as everyday baking. So from the word itself, it is handheld because it is manageable by hand. Next, we have slicer. So when we say slicer, that is a thin bladed knife or implement used for slicing, especially food like a cheese slicer, or you can use this in slicing different vegetables or fruits. Next, we have electric meat slicer. So just like the functions of slicer, this machine is typically used or typically designed for slicing meat. Next, we have corer. So corer class, that is a kitchen tool used to remove the cores of apples or other fruits. So again, when we say corer, from the word itself, it is a tool used to remove the cores of apples or other fruit. Next, we have coffee maker. Coffee maker, it contains a determined quantity of ground coffee and usually it includes an internal filter paper for optimal brewing results. Alright, so those are the auxiliary cooking equipment. Now, let's proceed to kitchen tools. So, when we say kitchen tools class, that is a hand devices or implements to perform a task. Again, when we say kitchen tools, that is a hand devices or implements to perform a task. Okay, so first, we have cans, bottles, or carton opener. So, it is used to open a food container easily and comfortably grip and torn knob. So, again, the main function of this cans bottle carton opener is to open our food container easily. Okay. So, next, we have colanders. It is also called as a vegetable strainer. Those are essential for various tasks from cleaning vegetables to straining pasta or other contents. So again, colander that is essential for various tasks from uh, cleaning vegetables to straining pasta or other contents. Okay, next we have cutting board. Uh, those are wooden or plastic. It is a board where meat, fruits and vegetables can be cut next we have funnel so a funnel glass it is used to fill jars made of various sizes of stainless steel aluminum or plastic so we use a funnel to transfer a liquid ingredients from one container to another okay next we have garlic press so a garlic press, it is a kitchen tool which is specifically designed for the purpose of pulping garlic. So removing, uh, removing the pulp of the garlic. Okay, next we have grater. It is used to grate, to shred, to slice and separate foods such as carrots, cabbage, and cheese or any other vegetables or fruits that you want to, sh uh, to shred, to grate, or to slice. So, as you can see on this picture, this is an example of four-sided grater. Alright, next we have kitchen shears. So, they are practical for opening food packages, cutting tape, or string, or simply removing labels or tags from items. So, it is also used to cut 
a lightweight ingredient or a thin ingredient. Next, we have potato masher. A potato masher class, it is used for mashing cooked potatoes, turnips, carrots, or other soft cooked vegetable. Next, we have rotary egg beater. So, it is used for beating small amount of eggs or butter. The beaters should be, uh, should be made of stainless steel. So, to avoid rust, so it is advisable that we should buy a rotary egg beater which is made of steel. Okay, so next to class is rubber scraper. So, that is a rubber or silicone tool used to blend or scrape the food from the bowl. So, usually, we use this in folding ingredients when we are making a dough or a butter. Next, we have serving spoon. So, serving spoons, the, those are utensils consisting of a small, shallow bowl on a handle used in preparing, serving, or eating food. Okay, next, serving tongs. It enables you to grab easily and transfer larger food items like poultry or meat portions to a serving platter or in a hot deep fryer and plate. So, it gives you a better grip, especially when used with a deep fryer, a large stock pot, or at the barbecue. So, again, it is it gave us a better grip in holding food items. Next, spatula. A spatula class, it is used to level of ingredients when measuring and to spread frostings and sandwich fillings. So, another uh, function of spatula is in leveling of the icing. So, when, when we are putting icing on the cake, so we use spatula to have a even surface. Okay, so we have spoon. So we have solids, latted, or perforated. So the solid ones are used to spoon liquids over foods and to leave foods, including the liquid, out of the, of the pot. So usually, of course, we use spoon when eating. Next, we have temperature scale. Temperature scales that are used to measure the heat intensity. So, we have different thermometers like used for different purposes in food preparation. Like for meat, candy, or deep fat frying and other small thermometers are hung or stand in ovens or refrigerators to check the accuracy of the equipment's thermostat. So, of course, the main function of Temperature scale is to measure the heat intensity. Next, we have whisk. It is used for blending, for mixing, for whipping eggs or butter, and for blending gravy, sauces, and soup. So, the beaters are made of loop steel piano wires which are twisted together to form the handle. Okay, next we have wooden spoon. So, wooden spoon, those are used for creaming, stirring, and mixing. So, they should be made of hard wood. So, to avoid mel melting, so wooden spoon should be made from hard wood. Okay, next we have measuring cup for liquid. So, those are commonly made up of heat-proof glass and transparent so that liquid can be seen. So, as you can see, glass, it has different label. Like, one half from one cup, from one and one half up to two cups. Next, we have household scale. So, household scales, those are used to weigh large quantity of ingredients like in kilos, commonly in rice, flour, sugar, legumes, or vegetable, and meat, up to 
25 pounds or 50 pounds. Next, we have scoop or dipper. So, those are used to measure serving, serving of soft food such as fillings, ice cream, and mashed potato. So, of course, scoop or dipper, it comes in variety of sizes, shapes, materials, and colors. Okay, next we have knife or French knife. It is used to chop, to dice, or mince food. It is a heavy knives have a, sh a saber or flat grind. Again, that is a French knife. It is used to chop, to dice, or to mince. Next type of knife is fruit and salad knife. It is used to prepare vegetables and fruits. So usually glass, it is made of plastic. Okay, next we have citrus knife. So citrus knife, it has two-sided blade and serrated edge. It is used to section citrus food. So of course, it is um, designed for cutting or sectioning citrus fruit okay next we have paring knife a paring knife it is used to core to peel and section fruits and vegetables blades are short concave with hollow ground okay the last one is peeler so it is used to scrape the skin of vegetables and fruits so the best ones are made of stainless steel with sharp double blade that swivel. So as you can see class, we have different types of pillar and it's made up of different uh, materials like plastic and stainless steel.